he adopted a simple lifestyle. Fasting and sleeping on a bed of wooden crates. Laval refused to believe the common opinion that the people he served were a worthless rabble incapable of any good. Word of his faith, kindness, compassion and patience began to spread. Laval awakened in them God's love and their own sense of self-worth, despite the oppression and prejudice which was their lot on a daily basis. He asked them to help in the revitalization of the church on the island. Soon it was the blacks of Mauritius who were assuming leadership in their own communities and in the church. Laval's ministry showed that they were not forgotten and they were not worthless. Jacques Laval lived in Mauritius for 23 years, laboring and journeying with the people he came to love and respect dearly. When he died there on September 9, 1864, there were over 40,000 people at his funeral. Catholics, Muslims, Hindus and Buddhists. Every day in Mauritius, thousands of people of all faiths visit the tomb of Father Laval to pray and thank God for the life of this man. In 1977, the government of Mauritius declared September 9th, the anniversary of Laval's death, a national holiday. In Rome, on October 22, 1978, Pope John Paul II presided over the beatification ceremony for Jacques Laval, the first member of the Spiritans to be so honored. Perhaps Laval himself today would be a bit amused by all the fuss. After all, was he not simply showing respect to others as his parents had taught him, helping others as he had when he was a doctor? listening to the pain and worries of the poor and forgotten as Jesus had done, and offering to share the free gift of the love of God which he had received. When I look at the life of Jacques Laval, I am reminded of the wonderful and surprising ways in which God has worked in my own life. I too had plans for my life, I was resolved to join the missionaries of Africa and to work in that continent. Instead, I was led almost by accident to join the Holy Ghost Fathers, or Spiritans as we call ourselves today. It was 1940 and the war was on. I was in Dublin, but due to go to England to enter the seminary of the White Fathers, as the missionaries of Africa were called in those days. However, because of war restrictions, my dad and I were unable to obtain a travel visa for me to go to England to begin my studies. How was I ever going to be a missionary if I could not even get out of Dublin? I did not know what I was going to do. I remember my dad turning to me and saying these exact words, Sonny, there must be other missionary congregations around. So that is how I ended up joining the Spiritans. Our God is full of unexpected surprises. With the Spiritans I was still determined to be a missionary in Africa. And so at the end of studies in Ireland, like all the other newly ordained, I said the prayer, Farewell then, my country, full of holy memories. Farewell, friends. Beloved parents, farewell. And then we all stood and very solemnly sang our missionary hymn, Go Ye Afar. The next day the Spiritan sent me three miles down the road to teach in St. Mary's High School in Dublin. I must say I was surprised and slightly disappointed. But the hand of God was there too. 
for it was at St. Mary's in 1949 that I began to work with teenagers, a ministry which I continued when I came to Canada in 1954 and which I still enjoy today. The workings of our God can be unexpected indeed. Laval's settled life as a doctor, his time as pastor in Pinterville, the chance visit of his seminary friends, and finally the enormous ministry to the people of Mauritius, all of these show the hand of God at work in Jacques' life. In his own plans for his life, could Jacques have ever imagined how God would lead him to Mauritius to work there with such a poor and despised segment of society? God had not forgotten the former slaves of Mauritius, nor had God forgotten Laval when young Jacques had wandered from the faith. God instead molded his natural goodness and kindness and sent him to share that with the poorest of the island of Mauritius, the ex-slaves that society despised and had abandoned those whom society had thought worthless and inferior became the cornerstone of a Christian revival on the island of Mauritius. By showing love and respect, Father Laval helped people whose dignity had been stolen to regain their sense of worth and pride. In our society and especially in our cities, there are many who are despised, discriminated against and ostracized, whether because of physical or mental disability, sexual orientation, addictions or just sheer material poverty. Society treats some of its members as worthless and despicable. How like Mauritius in the time of Jacques Laval. His example and the lessons we can learn from the success of his ministry with emancipated slaves remind us of the words of Jesus. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. In our TV series Project Millennium, which I hope you have been enjoying each week, we are not only looking back and celebrating Christian lives lived, but we are also looking ahead, hoping that the example of people like Jacques Laval will help all of us strive to create a better world in the new millennium. Do we open our eyes to the despised and the downtrodden in our world? God of the downtrodden, May your spirit widen our horizons and enlarge our hearts. In this country, what members of society have been forgotten are outright rejected. God of the downtrodden, give us ears to hear the cry of the poor. In our own particular community, be it small town or busy city, do we notice the people on the fringe? God of the downtrodden, stretch out your hand in power over our divided world. Even in our church, could we be more inclusive, inviting and welcoming? God of the downtrodden, overcome our prejudices and our reluctance to trust one another. Jubilee 2000 calls us to renew the face of the earth. What are we going to do about it? What am I going to do? <laughs>